Hello students. Today we will discuss about the skull bone. Now when you will read the skull, you are having the different views of the skull of a study. Now when I, have, I am having the skull in my hand, you know that if you will have the front, you know known as norma frontalis. If you are reading from the above, it is known as norma verticalis. When you will see from the sides, it is known as norma lateralis. When you will see from the posterior side, it is known as norma occipitalis. And when you will see from below, it is known as norma basalis. So in today's lecture, we are discussing the features of norma verticalis. That means if you will see the skull from above, here what are the features you are able to appreciate. Clear? Now when you will see the norma verticalis, what is the shape of the skull? Now when you will view from the above, the skull is usually oval in shape. So here if you will see the skull and if you will see from above, this is the outline which is appreciated. And this outline is showing the oval shape of the skull from the view and that is known as norma verticalis. Clear? Now apart from that, this is important that it is wider posteriorly. Now here you can see that this diameter is more as compared to this diameter. That means the skull is having the more wideness on the posterior side as compared to anterior when you are seeing from its norma verticalis. The second thing is that the shape is maybe circular or the oval. Clear? So what are the features you will have first? The first thing is that it is oval in shape and it is having wider more posteriorly as compared to anterior side. Now what are the bones which you will come across in this view? Now in this view you will have the frontal bone anteriorly. So this is your frontal bone. On both the side you are having the parietal bones. Posteriorly you will have occipital bone. So anteriorly you will have the frontal bone. On the posterior most you have occipital bone. So these are the two single bones. But there is a one pair of the parietal bone, right and left parietal bone. So this is your vertical view where you have the frontal bone, this is your occipital bone and you have right and left parietal bones. Clear? So when you are having the norma verticalis, you have to keep this thing in mind that norma verticalis is having a more posterior wide and interiorly narrower. It is having frontal bone occipital bone and in middle one pair of right and left parietal bones. Now what next is that what are the joints between these bones? Now these joints are known as suture joints which are the example of fibrous variety of joints. Now when you will see the joints you will find coronal suture, you will find sagittal suture, lambdoid suture. Now these are the three constant findings. So what is coronal suture? Now you know that this is your coronal plane. Now in this plane, in this plane you will find a suture anteriorly and this anteriorly placed suture between the frontal bone and two parietal bones is known as coronal suture. So in this image you can see this is frontal bone and these two parietal bone and in this middle you will find a suture line is known as coronal suture. Clear? What is sagittal suture? Now this is the midline plane which is known as sagittal plane. So in this plane if you will see you will find a suture between the two parietal bones and that is known as sagittal suture. Clear? So coronal suture placed between the frontal and two parietal bones. The suture cross the cranial vault from side to side and run downwards and forward. So if you will see side the suture will go downward and forward. Sagittal suture is between the two parietal bone. Now the third is lambdoid suture. Now when you will see the posterior side, you will find that there is a formation of lambda. Now this is the lambda. So the lambdoid suture is present between the two parietal bones and the occipital bone and it is a lambda shape. Now here it is the lambdoid suture. If you will draw the lambda, now this is the lambdoid suture. Now this lambdoid suture is basically the suture which is present here. Now this suture is a joint between the two parietal bones and the occipital bone posteriorly. 
So these are the three very constant findings. Now there is a one more suture is known as metopic suture. Now this metopic suture is not a constant finding. It is not present in the all skulls. Now this is occasionally present only in 3 to 8 percent of individuals and it lies in the median plane. It lies in the midline plane and it separates the two half of frontal bone. Now this is the first question that if the metopic suture is present, it is present in which bone? Answer is frontal bone. It is generally fused at the age of 6 year. Now this is the second question about the metopic suture. So if you will see normal skull, in the normal skull you will find the coronal suture, you will find sagittal suture, you will find the lambdoid suture. But sometimes in between the two half of the frontal bone, here you will have a suture and that is known as metopic suture. Now this metopic suture is generally present only in 3 to 8 percent individuals and it ossifies by the age of 6 years. So metopic suture is having three questions. It is a feature of which bone? Answer is frontal bone. Second thing is it is present in how many percentage? 3 to 8 percent and at what age it ossify answer is 6 years of age. Now what are the other features of your norma verticalis? So the first point comes is vertex. Now what is vertex? It is the highest point of sagittal suture. Now when you will see this view of the skull, now this is your sagittal suture. Now which is the highest point? Now this is the highest point of sagittal suture. So this highest point of the sagittal suture is known as vertex of your skull. Second is vault. What is vault? Vault of the skull is arch floor of the dome of skull. So this dome of the skull is having arch floor that is known as vault. What is bragma? Now bragma is a meeting point of two sutures. What are these two sutures? This is your coronal suture, this is your sagittal suture. So this point of meeting is known as bragma. Now this bragma is having a clinical importance because at the time of birth, the newborn babies are having fontanelles and this is the area where you have anterior fontanelle. So at this area, you will find a diamond shaped anterior fontanelle. And the question comes is, at what age the anterior fontanelle ossify? Answer is 18 to 24 months. That means one and half year to two years of age. Clear? So what is bragma? Bragma is a point where you have intersection of your sagittal suture and coronal suture. And at this point of the bragma, what will happen? There is a presence of anterior fontanelle in intrauterine life and this anterior fontanelle ossify at the age of 18 to 24 months. The second point comes is, what is lambda? Now when you will see the lambda, lambda is the meeting point between the sagittal suture and lambdoid suture. So where is the lambdoid suture? This is the lambdoid suture. Where is the sagittal suture? This is the sagittal suture. So this point of intersection on the posterior side is known as lambda. Now this lambda is here. So lambda is here, bragma is here. Here you will have anterior fontanelle. Here we have posterior fontanelle. Now this posterior fontanelle is also ossified by the age of two to three months of the uh, life. That means there are two fontanelles, one is anterior, second is posterior. Posterior fontanelle ossifies earlier at the two to three month of life after birth, while the anterior fontanelle ossify at 18 to 24 months after birth. So these are the three important features. What is bragma, what is lambda, and what is vertex. The next feature is what is parietal eminence? Now when you will see this norma verticalis from superior view, you will find the most prominent 
points on your parietal bone. Now these highly prominent points on the parietal bone are known as parietal eminence. So these are the parietal eminence. So parietal eminence are the most convex or highly prominent points of your parietal bones and these are the common site of the fracture in case of the skull bone. Now what is parietal foramina? Now the parietal foramina is a foramina which is present on the both parietal bone on both the side of this sagittal suture. Now here if you will see the sagittal suture, here you can see this is the parietal foramina. So parietal foramina are one on each side, pierces the parietal bone near the upper border of the parietal bone. They are almost 2.5 to 4 centimeter in front of lambda. That means this is your lambda, this is your bragma. If I am searching for the parietal foramina, I have to search posteriorly, not anteriorly. Now, in the posterior part, around 3 to 4 centimeter anterior to the lambda, you will find a set of foramina on both the side of your sagittal suture. And these are your parietal foramina. These parietal foramina allow the passage of emissary vein. What is that? Emissary vein. And these emissary veins are connecting the intracranial venous system to the extracranial venous system. Then you have one more feature is known as obelion. Now what is obelion? Obelion is the point on the sagittal suture between the two parietal foramina. Now this is the sagittal suture. Now this part of the sagittal suture between these two parietal foramina is known as obelion. So in this skull, in this norma verticalis, if somebody will ask you where is the obelion? So I have to look for the parietal foramina and just next to the parietal foramina on the sagittal suture, this point is known as obelion. Clear? So what are the features we have seen is the vertex first, then vault, bragma, lambda, parietal eminence, parietal foramina, obelion and the last is temporal lines. Now when you will see the norma verticalis, Temporal lines are not well visible. If you want to see the temporal lines, you have to go on the normal lateralis. Now when you will see the temporal lines, they are two in number. So the lines begins at the zygomatic process of frontal bone. Now where is the zygomatic process of frontal bone? So this is your, the frontal bone. This is the zygomatic process of frontal bone. So the line begins with this zygomatic process of frontal bone, clear? Now you can see that there are arch form lines. Now this is your temporal line. So what is the starting point? This part is known as zygomatic process of frontal bone and from the zygomatic process of frontal bone, the temporal line will start and then it arches, it arches backward and upward, crosses the frontal bone coronal suture and parietal bone. So it is arching backward. First it is running on the frontal bone. Here it is crossing the coronal suture. Then it comes on the parietal bone. Clear? So when you will see the temporal lines. So temporal lines are visible here. Now it starts from this point that is the zygomatic process of frontal bone. It is going upward and backward. It is crossing this coronal suture then it is coming on the parietal bone and going posteriorly. Now over the parietal bone, it becomes two, superior and inferior. So when you will see the normal lateralis, you will find the two which are running parallel to each other, superior and inferior uh, temporal lines. Now when you will trace anteriorly, you will find both the temporal lines are single. But when you will trace posteriorly, the superior temporal line fade out over the posterior part of the parietal bone, but the inferior temporal line continue downwards and continue with the zygomatic arch. So this is the zygomatic arch and if you will trace the zygomatic arch, it will continue with inferior temporal line. Clear? So what are the temporal lines? Temporal lines are the lines which starts 
anteriorly from the frontal bone. Which part of the frontal bone? Zygomatic arch. Then they will arch is backward. And when they will go on the posterior side, they are crossing this coronal suture. And once they will cross the coronal suture, they will come on the parietal bone. On the parietal bone, you have the two lines, superior and inferior temporal lines. And as you will go posteriorly, the superior temporal line will fade out but inferior temporal line continue with the zygomatic arch. Clear? So now, at the end of this session of Norma Verticalis, I hope you are having the understanding about the different bones of the Norma Verticalis and different features of Norma Verticalis. So this is all for the session. Thank you.